Okay, I wanted to put this video together, just I suppose my experience in having laid um, quite a bit of track, probably um, a couple of hundred metres I think, and um, I suppose the first thing I want to say is that um, I am probably ultra fussy, not only do I want my track to work right, run right, but I also wanted it to look good. So before I uh, actually started uh, even the track laying process, I started um, looking at um, various things that were available, like the, uh, the Pico gauge here. And I also got a fair few of the um, sheets of templates, which um, the, the, the Pico templates for points. So what I worked out was, I put these together. This is a, uh, a, a dual track. I'll just focus in a bit so you can see. So this um, shows you the gauge that I use. Um, so I use this spacing. Um, there is a wider spacing here, but I use this spacing. And this is uh, the exact spacing. If you put two points back to back to make a crossover, this is the uh, this is the spacing. I also did a uh, triple one, largely because my uh, station at Four Oaks has two lots of three lines going through. So uh, I wanted to make sure that I got the uh, the spacing exactly right. So once uh, I I worked that out, I then wanted to um, I de decided I was going to lay my track on cork and I knew that I'd be using a hell of a lot of cork so I looked at what was available um, where you can buy strips or whatever and I thought it would be uh, better to buy it in sheets so in the lower area where the fiddle yard is that is the um, I think it's 1.6 mil but in the um, scenic section it is uh, this uh, three mil. So what I worked out was that if I did 22 mil, it would be uh, just right. And then I could put that chamfer on the side with um, uh, some sandpaper to get that ballast shoulder that I wanted. So the first thing I did was buy a couple of sheets, large sheets of the 3mm cork. And what I used to cut it was, so I'd have the sheet actually on my uh, sort of trolley thing there, and I'd have the sheet, big sheet like this, and then what I would then do is I would have so the cork would be like this, the sheet if you like. Let's get this pen out of the way. And then I made this tool, which is a block with like um, a blade on it. So imagine this is the sheet here. Then you just run this up and down. And hey presto, you end up with a... Uh, piece of 22 mil cork. So I would then uh, do like 20 or 30 of these at a time and um, I'd also done some tests to see uh, how it would work for um, curves and various things. So the way that I would attach this to the board and bear in mind my layout is basically um, ply painted um, so what I would then do is I'd work out where the track's going to go and I would just rub a key just across the paint um, just so to have something to adhere to so then I'll turn this upside down I would then um, use PVA and I would apply the PVA to the board 
and then I would use a brush and I would apply the PVA quite thick to the back of the cork and I would wait till it started to go tacky and then of course you'd come along with and, and start to lay it and of course you can use a straight edge um, so, you, so you can get straight so that straights when they're straight are straight and then what I found was when the glue is added there is actually no problem with forming curves and you know I'd use various weights and, and things but in general um, as long as I had the key and I had plenty of glue and it was just going tacky it was perfect and of course using various templates you could obviously if you wanted to do a set curve you can do just as many people have done which is to um, you know lay um, a pencil line but anyway once you've got that one uh, piece laid what I found was that I found this piece of balsa wood and it's the exact the absolute exact distance I need between my two bits of uh, card so uh, this is actually slightly wider but then you would just come along like this and it was perfect this is actually not 22 mil it's actually a bit wider because I had to do something slightly different in the TMD but anyway and the great thing the balsa wood will also curve as well so what that then means is you've now laid the cork and um, so effectively then you just need then when you lay the track is to lay the cork sorry lay the track right in the middle of the cork and obviously for straights you can use uh, a template because as I said I like my straights to be straight and then when they're curved I you know like them nice and smooth and, and whatever so once you've got the cork down now I do know that obviously some people will just put a big sheet of cork and lay it on but at least with this you get that nice shoulder and um, you know I, I actually took quite a few pictures and video when I was in England looking at track and how high the ballast was and various things and, and the, this actually I think sort of gave me the the right sort of height and the look that I was after so the next thing is then is obviously you then have to um, put your dropper on now some people will use um, a dropper which is attached to a fish plate um, I've not done that because I am to say um, absolutely I I just want standard sleeper spacing I don't like big gaps where there's every joint that's just me so what I've done is I would work out where the uh, track is I'll just zoom in oops and obviously you've got these uh, gaps on the inside or the outside depending on where whether you're curving it that way or that way so what I would do is I use like um, one of those white felt tip pens and I found it very good for marking sleepers or something that need to be removed but where this uh, where this gap is it's very simple just to cut cut that out make that slightly bigger like so you're still maintaining the integrity of the track and then you just come across on the opposite side where you'll have to take it all out um, and then anyway effectively you then have you can clean that up obviously I'm doing it quickly 
but you have more than enough space there to wipe to put your red and black on and then obviously you would come along mark at the side of the track your two holes drill turn it over and you've got no wires on the side that are visible you've got no melted sleepers um, and because I actually have um, droppers on every piece of track if something failed I mean I, I'm still getting voltage um, or the continue, con continuity through the uh, through the fish blades unless it's an area where you've got um, an insulated one but you've still got the ability if necessary to <laughs> You know, if something went wrong, you could still just drill a hole at the side and put a wire there if you wanted to. But uh, anyway, that's how I did that. Um, and then in terms of attaching the track to the um, cork, I first thing I do is go over the track with the... Uh, sandpaper so it's got a nice key then I come along with the PVA and I follow the webbing along there so it's not dripping through and then slowly just paint the, paint the track and you can also paint a line down the centre of the track turn it over and you will find that um, you get a great bond. Now not everybody will use PVA, that's just what I use because it's cheap and I can tell you I've used on this layout I think about probably about 18 litres so far. But I also have my box of uh, tricks as well um, in here. I have, um, I think uh, Ewan was one that uh, talked about this little device which is just for putting a fish plate on the end. Um, then for me I've got quite a few boxes of these um, which are the additional sleepers which are cut out so that you can um, fill the gaps um, at the joints. Um, I also made up these little things which are, you can see are just uh, a um, peg and that goes in the gaps and will hold the track down. But now when you come to actually do a joint on the track and you've got two pieces of track. This is, um, th th this, this is what I do. So I'll look at the track and sometimes you don't know, okay, am I gonna cut that side or that side? But as I mentioned, I like to um, get the webbing exactly or the sleeves exactly right. So what I do is I, I take some spare sleepers like this you don't, actually don't need that many. You could just use, you could just use, um, I don't know, six or eight. So I'll just cut that. So I just lie this next to the track. So now we've got the sleepers, as you can see, in line. Then I just bring this in, and it might be like that. So now I know that if I hold that there and I stick that there I know then I've got it so sometimes let me just let me just uh, show you exactly what I would do so I would take this end sleeper off which I'm going to do now So I've just cut through, I've got these uh, little pliers here, which are great for this type of thing. So, here we go. 
So this is a better one. So I've now got my sleepers next door. So I know now if I do that, it's going to be spot on. So now all I would do is I'd get my white pen and I would just come across the center because I'm going to put those, I'm going to put two extra sleepers in here. So I just come across the middle with the pen. Then I use my Dremel. This is a little dre Dremel blade, very thin. And then you bzz, bzz on each one. Turn it over, take the burr off, use my file, and like a needle file, just go in on the edge there so you can get the sleeper in. Sorry, the fish plate in. One thing that I do as well, I have in my box of tricks, I'll just zoom out. In my box of tricks here, I will have a number of fish plates that I use just for test fitting because they're loose. When I say they're loose, they've been on and off, on and off, but when I actually put the track together for the last time, I use a brand new fish plate and away you go. So obviously this isn't uh, all worked out, but obviously then you come along and jo join it, whatever. Um, and then obviously you can use the uh, templates if you want. But I also look down it as well, because I think if it's good on the eye, um, that's what you want. Now I have seen some people on curves where they're joining talk about you know taking the track out and, and bending it and I think that can work quite well. I haven't actually done that myself largely because I suppose I didn't discover that but one thing I did do on curves if ever I was joining something curved even if the wasn't the perfect um, perfect shape of the template what I would do sometimes is I'd actually just put the end in like that just to keep the two tracks in the per while, while the glue dried so it made it nice and smooth. So just the actual end of, the, of one of these templates. So it's very hard for me to replicate but you know if you had a curve like that you know you, 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 you could do that. So that's pretty much it really, um, but uh, obviously key things like trying to keep the points um, in line um, as opposed to if you've got a point you don't want the track sort of doing this at the point, you want to try and keep everything smooth. Now I'll show you some track formations um, and as I said I am very fussy about the way it looks so like for me, I couldn't just have, have that as a joint. I would have to have the right sleeper spacing. So, um, so you can't actually tell where the joints are. It's not always 100% achievable, but you can certainly make it look um, pretty close. And I think you, it does pay in the look. But I'll show you a couple of track formations now. So that is the area where we have a point, a double slip, two diamond crossings into then a crossover. And all that um, was achieved without the need for any special bits of track. Um, probably not great to see there. Um, Here's a crossover and obviously these have been ballasted but I'll show you um, the last area that I worked on that's not. So this is two long radius points going into a diamond crossing which goes down to the TMD. Now what's interesting when you are doing these formations with code 55, quite often in here 
you will need to trim sleepers. So what you want to do is not completely butcher one side of the track. You want to try and where you can is at least keep um, the sleeper webbing where the tracks actually inserted into the webbing. So it doesn't matter too much about the outer piece, but you don't want to cut inside the track because then the tracks actually not held on with anything. So all this here required cutting out sleepers um, and then inserting those, um, those uh, special sleepers for the gaps. So you can see that um, it's fairly neat and above all, it's flat. If you don't have your track flat, you'll get derailments. And it's amazing how often you can be putting on a um, insulated fish plate and it's not quite sitting right and the track slightly rides up and then all of a sudden you get those derailments. Now, when I was uh, laying this, um, and you can go back to some of my um, past videos and you'll see where I've just laid the cork. But you can see this um, crossover, which is there. Now, for some reason, when I laid it, the point was slightly at a very slight angle and I was horrified that I was getting derailments. Not every time, but one in five certain locos. So I actually went back and had a look down the track. And when I looked down the track, you could see it wasn't straight. So I had to pretty much take up the track, which was quite easy, just getting a flat blade, like a very flat, thin sc scraper blade, and uh, realigned it. And then, of course, absolutely no problem after that. Now, probably an area where, you know, you've got to take your time. But in the TMD, we've got uh, quite a few formations here. We've got crossovers, um, crossovers under, under here. But you can see that if you just take your time, you can get it really good. And you can see here where the drop is coming. And um, yeah, they're, they're just soldered underneath. Yeah, you can just see they're just soldered underneath. Um, and there's quite a few medium radius points there. Um, and obviously then when it's ballasted and weathered, um, you know, it, it really can look quite good. But uh, I think it's worth taking your time with. And I think it's just a matter of practice. And, um, you know, just I suppose it depends what, what everybody wants. Um, like I said, <laughs> I'm fussy. Um, doesn't mean to say that being fussy is right. That's just me. But that's how I do it. It's not the only way. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of other ways. But I thought I would share that because um, I've got to say that my track um, I very rarely get any derailments at all, very rare. And I very rare, I don't have any magnetic couplings and I get no um, coaches. Occasionally I'll get a wagon, but that's usually when the actual couplings um, are not at the right height. But um, I just put that down to the track being flat and, um, and you know, straight when it's meant to be straight. Whereas in previous layouts, when I was a kid, you know, I, um, I had uh, some big balls ups, um, 
I just didn't pay enough attention to it. But I really wanted to make sure if I was building a layout, I wanted to do it the best that I could. So anyway, that's it. Hope it's hope it's been quite useful for um, for people looking at uh, doing something similar. I can actually take the bridge off. <laughs>